In this question, we are going to look at Newton's second law in terms of two objects that are connected by a rope or a string. So our system con um, consists of two separate objects, but they are connected. We've got two blocks, B of mass 15 kilograms. So I'm reading the question. Let's fill in what we don't know on the diagram. This mass is 15 kilograms. And we've got A of unknown mass. I don't know this mass. They're connected by a lined, inextensible rope. Here's the rope over here on a rough horizontal surface. They say a force of magnitude 120 Newton is applied to block B. So this is force applied at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. The coefficient of friction for the surface for block B is 0.2. So they give me the coefficient of friction for B is 0.2. And they give me the kinetic friction of block A. So they give me Fk, or kinetic friction for block A, is 10 newtons to the left. That means that the system, the blocks, are moving to the right. I'm going to choose to the right as my positive direction for this question. They also tell me that the system accelerates to the right. So it's moving to the right, it accelerates to the right, at 2.08 meters per second per second, or 2.08 meters per squared second that's how we should write the unit it's just written like this because i couldn't raise it to the power on this program that i'm using so it's 2.08 meters per second squared to the right okay so first of all is this in newton's first law or second law question and it's a very important teacher tip to always distinguish between the two and this is a newton's second law question because they say that the system accelerates that means that i know i'm going to use f net is equal to ma but let's jump into the first question where it says, draw a free body diagram for all the forces acting on block B. And please take note how many marks this question is. This question is worth five marks. And I've mentioned this teacher tip in a video before. If the question's worth five marks, you need five forces, five arrows. So let's draw that free body diagram quickly for block B. So when we draw a free body diagram, we represent the object, which in this case is B, as a dot. Always a dot. Draw your dot nice and big for me. Don't draw a little small dot. I'll show you why now. We've got the force of gravity or the weight acting straight downwards. It's FG or you can say W. It doesn't matter. Because B is on a surface, it's got a normal force acting straight up. That is FN. We've got the applied force acting up and to the right at an angle. That is F applied. That is very, very important that you draw it at an angle like that because it's at an angle in the picture. Then the box is moving to the right, which means friction is acting to the left. So friction is always in the opposite direction of motion. And then this rope over here is connecting the two blocks. Because we have a rope connecting the two blocks, I want you to think of it like this. The box is moving this way, but think about what the rope is doing. The rope is pulling A along. So the tension in the rope is actually pulling B backwards a little. Think about it. If you're dragging, B is dragging A along. That rope with A attached is slightly pulling B to the left. So tension for B is going to the left. So tension for B is going to the left. Now, if I had to draw a free body diagram for A, which the question did not ask me for, but I just want you to know how to draw it in case they did ask you for it, it would look like this. We would have weight going straight down, normal force going straight up because A is also on a surface, Fn. The box, remember the system, this acts as a system, it moves to the right, so friction will be going to the left, friction. However, the tension in the rope for A, so A is being pulled by B, the rope is pulling A that way. So the tension for A is going to the right, the tension for B is going to the left. Okay, they go in opposite directions, but their values are the same. So whatever this tension value is, let's say it's 10 Newton to the right, this value will be 10 Newton to the left. So same value, same rope, same tension. The tension forces just point in opposite directions. Remember the question asked me to draw a free body diagram for the forces acting on block B. So my marks will be allocated here. One, two, three, four, five. Five marks, five arrows, no extra arrows, please. Remember, on your free body diagram for marks, you are not going to break up the force into its components. However, I'm going to be drawing a rough version of this where I do where I do that, but that's just to help me with the question. So on your free body diagram for marks, that's how you do it. 
Our next question asks me to calculate the frictional force experienced by block B. Now, grade 11s and grade 12s, the first thing that I want you to do or try and do when a question asks you to calculate frictional force is to see if you can use this formula over here because this is the formula that we use to calculate frictional force. And in this question, I gave you the coefficient of kinetic friction for B. It was 0, 0,2. If you can't remember, it says it over here. The coefficient of friction for the surface, coefficient of friction, that's that funny symbol, mu k, for the surface on block B is 0, 0,2. So we have that. We've got that. We're looking for friction. I can use this formula if I somehow know the normal force. Can I calculate the normal force for block B? Now, a lot of students make this mistake, so this is a very important teacher tip. A lot of students say to me, ma'am, because the block is on a flat surface, isn't the normal force equal to the weight? That is the case if there are no other forces acting upwards for that block. However, for this example, we have this force, which is acting up and to the right. It's acting at an angle. So we can't actually say that the weight and the normal force are the same for block B. No. What we need to do, go back to your free body diagram, and I'm going to actually draw one with the components in for F applied just as a rough. So here's my free body diagram. What do you mean by components, ma'am? Remember force applied is acting up and at an angle. So technically force applied consists of this force over here, which is F applied parallel or X or something like that, F applied parallel. And this one, which is called F applied perpendicular. Now, remember, I'm looking for frictional force, which is over here. In order to find frictional force, I need the normal force. So what I need to do first is find the normal force. That's what I'm doing here. But take a look at what I've been given. Here's normal force. Normal force acts up and down. Which other forces or components act up or down? I know you're going to say FG, and I know a lot of my students say, yes, ma'am, FN and FG, they're the same. No, not in this case. There's a third force acting up or down, and that's F applied perpendicular. We need to take all three of these forces and add them together. So to find the normal force, what you need to do for me is you need to say FN plus FG plus F applied perpendicular. Those three forces together must give you zero. Why must those three forces added together give you zero? Remember, the box is accelerating or moving in this direction, the horizontal or the parallel direction. But is the box moving or accelerating in this direction, the up-down direction? No, it's not. It's not moving. It's not accelerating. In the up-down direction, the net force is zero. So in the up-down direction, the sum of these three forces must equal to zero. Okay, cool. Let's choose up as positive. I'm looking for my normal force. My weight, Fg. Remember, Fg is equal to mass times gravity. It's going down. Look how it's pointing down, which means if I choose up as positive, Fg is going to be negative. Fg is mass times gravity. What's the mass of block B? We had it on this page over here. It's 15 kilograms. What is G? It's gravitational acceleration. It's 9.8. Right. F applied perpendicular. Look how it's pointing up. Yeah, it's this component here. It's the Y component or the vertical component of the applied force. It's pointing up and up is my positive direction. Now, how do you work that out? Look at the angle they give you. They give you 30 degrees over here. I'm looking for the perpendicular component. Look at the 30. The 30 degrees is opposite or the perpendicular component, F applied perpendicular, is opposite the 30 degrees. So I use sine. So I go 120 sine 30. If you don't know why I'm doing this or where I'm getting this from, you need to go back to the videos where I do resolve vectors into components. I've done lots of videos on this, but basically you take your hypotenuse, which is your 120, it's that, this arrow over here, sine, because I'm looking for the opposite, and then your angle. Those three added together must give you zero. I hope you're with me because this is super, super, super important in order to understand. You need to add all three forces together. It must give you zero. The weight is going down. That's why it's negative. You solve on your calculator. So you take that over. You take that over. I'm not going to do the in-between steps, but basically your answer for the normal force 
is positive 87 newton now does it make sense that it comes out as a positive yes because i chose up as positive and normal force is pointing up now keep reminding yourself why did i want to find the normal force again remember i need to put the normal force in there because i'm trying to work out friction so friction's my main goal it's my main prize it's what i'm looking for remember the coefficients of kinetic friction they gave me in the question it's zero comma two and what's the normal force we just worked it out it's 87 newton okay so what do i do i multiply them together and i get 17 comma four zero newtons and they want frictional force they didn't say magnitude so very important teacher tip if they don't say magnitude like in this case you must give a direction and friction will be to the left or you can say in the negative direction or you can say in the opposite direction so you need to do this in order to get normal force then you put your normal force in the frictional formula and then you get friction our next question asks us to calculate the tension in the string connecting x and y now we have two options when calculating the tension I can either use block A or I can use block B. However, I want you to understand that using block A won't make sense because I'm looking for tension, but I also don't know the mass of block A. I'll explain that in a little bit more detail now, but I'm going to use block B in order to find the tension. Now, how do I do this? We are working with Newton's second law of motion, which means I need to use F net is equal to mass times acceleration remember because we're using newton's second law of motion we need to work out the sum of the forces and i use my free body diagram to help me with this so what i do is i first want you to ask yourself in which direction are these boxes accelerating are they accelerating left right or are they accelerating up down and i know you know the answer they're accelerating left right so what we're going to do is we're going to use all the forces acting left right for this box for box b okay all of these forces so if applied parallel friction and tension those three are the forces acting in this direction the left right direction if i add those three together it's going to equal the mass times acceleration of the box so f net that's the sum of the forces sum means adding so we're going to add t fk and fa parallel so we're going to go fa parallel plus t plus fk that must give me mass times acceleration now let's see if we can use this in order to work out what is happening here to calculate the tension so we're looking for tension do i know the mass of block b yes i do it's 15. do i know the acceleration yes i do it's given in the question there it is so i know the acceleration do i know the friction yes i just worked out the friction for block b and do i know fa parallel well i don't right now but i can easily calculate it using trig so do you see how i have one unknown if i use block b if i had to use block a it would not work because i would have two unknowns this is the free body diagram for block a remember i would have to use these two forces so it would be f net equals ma and the forces that i care about would be tension and friction is equal to mass times acceleration do i know the acceleration yes it's given in the question do i know the mass of block a no do i know the tension no i'm looking for it and do i know the friction for block a yes so do you see using block a is not going to help me because i have not one but two unknowns it makes much more sense to use block b because i only have one unknown so i'm choosing to the right as positive as i mentioned earlier that means that f a parallel will be positive now earlier on we worked out f a perpendicular Do you remember we said 120 sine 30. i'm now trying to work out the parallel component which is this one over here f a parallel look at your angle f a parallel is adjacent to the angle so i use cos so it's going to be 120 cos 30. I do this in a lot more detail in other videos, so you want, might want to go check that out if that's confusing to you. I'm looking for T, so leave T as positive. You don't sub in any signs here. I'm not doing simultaneous equations. I'm looking for T. Let's see what T comes out as being. Friction is going to the left, so I substitute friction in as a negative. 
Now, where do I get the friction value from? I just calculated it in the previous question. Remember, we just calculated the frictional force experienced by block B, which was 17,4. So it's going to be negative 17,4. And I know what some of you are thinking. Ma'am, friction is going to the left. That's why it's negative. But why aren't you putting tension in as negative? I'm going to leave tension just like that. When I solve for tension, my answer should be negative. Okay, so we're looking for the answer to be negative. We don't substitute it in as being negative. We only do that when we are setting up simultaneous equations. Okay, what's the mass of block B? 15 kilograms. And my acceleration was given in the question. It's 2,08. When you solve for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave T on the one side of the equation. I say 15 times 2,08. Then you minus this term over here. And then you add this term over here. Remember, we are solving. So we do inverse operations. And you should get T as being 50, negative 55, actually. You should get negative 55, comma, 3, 2, 3, and so on. Now, why is it negative? It makes sense. Tension is going to the left, so it should come out as a negative. But you never leave your answer as negative. You're going to write 55, comma, 3, 2, Newton, to the left so you never teach a tip very important never leave your vector answers as negative if it comes out as a negative you rewrite it as a positive and you change your direction to the in the negative direction or to the left or in the opposite direction so write answer as a positive always you always write your answer as a positive and then you must give your direction Okay, they didn't ask for the magnitude of tension, they asked for tension. So you must stay to the left. Okay, our last question was calculating the mass of block A. Okay, so I hope it makes sense that if we're calculating the mass of block A, that we use the net F net equation for block A. So how do you do this? We know we're dealing with Newton's second law, so we're going to start off with F net equals MA, always. Where do I get F net from? It's the sum of the forces, and I get it from using my vector diagram or my free body diagram. Remember, A is going to accelerate in this direction, the horizontal direction, the X direction. So I care about these forces acting in the X direction. I've got tension, and I've got friction. I need to add those together, and it should equal mass times acceleration. Remember, we're looking for the mass of A. So we're looking for mass. We're looking for M. Do I know acceleration? Yes, it's given in the question. It's 2,08. Do I know friction of block A? Yes, it's given in the question. Do I know the tension in the rope? Yes, I just calculated it in the previous question. So I substitute in what I know and I solve for what I do not know. Remember, we took the right as positive. So my tension is going to be positive. My friction goes to the left. So it's going to be a negative. What was my tension? I just solved for it. It's 55 comma 3, 2. 55 comma 3, 2. My friction is going to the left. So it's a negative. Where do I get that from? Remember, they gave me that in my question. They said, yeah, the kinetic friction of block A is 10 newtons left. Okay, so we're working with block A. We know that it's 10 newtons. This value over here is 10 newtons left. So it's minus 10. I'm looking for the mass. Remember, acceleration was also given in the question. It's 2,08. It's written in the question. So how do I do this? I say 55,32 minus 10, and I divide it by 2,08. So 55,32 minus 10 is 45,32. And then this is times 2,08. So I must divide by 2,08. And what I get is 21,788 and so on, or 21,79 kilograms. There we go, grade 11s and grade 12s. I hope this question has been helpful. I hope you subscribe for more questions like this. Let me know in the comments below, and I can't wait to see you in future videos. Goodbye, everybody.